Bros. Today is Mother's Day. It is one of my favorite holidays. Do you know why? Because I don't have to do anything. Today is my day where I get to sleep, I get to rest, they cook for me, they cater to me, and it is the best holiday right next to my birthday. I don't get as many gifts today, but that's fine. That's fine, we'll work on that. But I wanted to take a moment and shout out my mother because she's the best mom in the whole wide world. Mom, I love you. Happy Mother's Day. I wish that everybody could have one just like you. Hey, give me one second. Hey, Tim. Come here, sir. Because I feel like he's gonna get in trouble if he doesn't take a moment to say happy happy Mother's Day. Not happy birthday, but happy Mother's Day to his mom. Come on over. Wow, she's just out here taking all these pastoral <laughs> liberties. <laughs> all of them. Happy Mother's Day to my madre. Yep. And my mom is the best mom too in the whole yes, wide world. So is. we just have the best moms. We really do. In the whole wide world. I prayed for a mother-in-law that's not like a mother-in-law, but is it like my mother? And that is what I gave. Some people talk about their mother-in-laws and bad experiences. I don't have that testimony. I have the best mother-in-law that a girl could have. And mom, happy Mother's Day to you too. They really are close. It's so funny. You've been close for years. Before they, we were ever dating. We They were talking more before. They were literally, she talks to my mother yep. more than I. And she has talked to my mother more than I mm -hmm. for probably 20 years. And I still do probably. <laughs> yes. So, so that's fine. All right. Bye. Oh. Happy Mother's Day, old moms. All right. So we're going to go into worship. Today's service is going to be a little bit different, guys. Today we are going to speak to different types of moms. Because, you know, we range. We're not all the same. We don't have all of the same experiences. So we're going to speak to a bunch of different types of moms today. And we're going to have some of our team come in and speak to them. But before we do, we're going to jump into worship. So let's go in. Abraham, you're the God of covenant, your faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart burn when you speak a word It will come to pass Great is your faithfulness to me Great is your faithfulness Away, the word remains the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak the word, it will come. Settings in my praise your 
is going to be a little bit different guys we are going to speak to a bunch of different types of moms so we're going to have some people come in from our team to talk to you we want to talk to the different kinds of moms you know why because we're all different we are not the same we don't have the same experiences so what we want to do instead of doing a broad stroke message that talks to one particular mom the proverbs 31 mom what we want to do is speak to the lonely mom, the tired mom, the one, the moms who's experienced loss, the mom who has experienced the challenges of being a mom, and the mom that's doing great. So, what we get, what we did, and what we're going to do today is we're just going to bring in a couple of people to speak directly to them. But before we get into them, I wanted to share with you what I felt the Lord was saying to me today. Turn with me to Genesis three twenty, and it says, "And a Adam." called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Then down in chapter 4, skim it around a little bit, it says, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother. This is the part where we skip around. Now Cain talked with with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field 
that Cain rose up against his brother and killed him. So now you are cursed, skimming around a little bit more. Now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. This is the Lord speaking. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Hmm. This part of the scripture for me says, Eve went through so many phases and stages of motherhood. She went through the highs and the lows of pregnancy. It doesn't say it, but I'm sure she experienced some nausea. She went through morning sickness, just like the rest of us. Then she actually gave birth to two sons. She went through the toddler phase. She watched them grow. She watched them crawl around. Like She enjoyed being a toddler. Who knows? She may have even had postpartum. We don't know. But she went through all of the phases of being a mom. She raised her kids. She had teenagers. But then something happened. And one of her sons turns on the other son. And then she lost a son. And then, because of what he did, she ended up losing relationship with her other son. My God, as a mom, can you imagine all of the emotions that she felt just in the last part, just in the last part of, you, I don't have my son, and now I don't have my other son either because he can no longer be with us in this moment. She, I'm sure, it doesn't say it, but I'm, I'm sure she experienced some shame in it. The son that I raised, the kid that I raised did this. Have you ever experienced it? Like, looked at your kids like, did I raise you? I know I taught you better than that. And then they turn around and do something and you're like, oh man. What she must have felt in that moment. And then the anger she probably felt at the Lord, like, I lost my child. Like not only am I grieving, but I'm angry. He had all of his life ahead of him. Like, why did he have to go? He was a good boy. Like, he was, he was doing good things. He offered, he had an offering for you that you actually liked, and now he's no longer with us. Why did he have to die? All of the, she, had, she went through so many emotions. But the one thing that stuck out to me the most in it was <laughs> in verse 15. And it says that Cain was marked by God. He was marked. And I want you to know that even though you may not be near your child, he may have gone off or she may have gone off or your relationship may be estranged. Like, whatever it is, your child is still marked by the Lord. He said, whoever goes against him, whoever tries to kill him, I will handle that. He put a mark on Cain to identify him. And you know what identifies your kids? The promises of God to you. The covenant that he made with you. How many promises has he made to you regarding your child? That they will serve the Lord, that they will come home, that they will be delivered, that they will get off drugs, that they will do right. How many promises has he made to you regarding your child? Those are his marks. Your child is marked by the Lord. I mean, I've read this scripture over and over. I've, like, everybody's read Genesis. We all know the story. But when I was studying it, I was like, even in all of the grief, even in all of everything that she was experiencing, the Lord took the time to give her some kind of hope, 
to give her some kind of promise in it. And so that's what I want to give you today. There's hope and there's promise in everything that you're going through. In the loss, in the grief, in the shame, in the, in the, the heaviness that you may be feeling as a mom. The Lord is still faithful to all of his promises concerning you and concerning your children. So, so I'm going to pray for you now. <sighs> Father, thank you. God, I thank you. I thank you for the mom who is tired, who's experiencing the feelings of shame, the feelings of guilt, the feelings of loss, the feeling of not just loss, but feeling lost in it all. I pray that you bring back to their remembrance all of the promises that you've given them concerning their children, that you would love on them, that you will show them that your mark is your protection on their children that you've got it you've got them covered that you've got them them safe that you are watching over them and i pray that you continue to give your give the moms the strength to keep going to keep praying to keep pressing and to keep living life in jesus name amen all right let's go and see what some of our team has to say to some other moms. Good morning, Ecos family. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. I bring you greetings from the greater Atlanta area. My name is Erica Lee, and today I'm going to share with you some golden nuggets in the Word of God. So let's get into it. Um, I want to encourage mothers this morning specifically who have experienced loss, um, whether it be the loss of your mother or the loss of your child or the loss of a mother figure in your life, I want to encourage you with a very familiar scripture. Uh, it comes out of the 147th Psalm and it's just one verse, the third verse. And it says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. And the Amplified goes on to say, curing their pains and their sorrows. And I think it's important because the scripture is so familiar to understand where the writer in Psalms was coming from. The brokenhearted are different from those who have just been hurt. Someone who is brokenhearted is inwardly pained at the remembrance of that person. So this morning, this Mother's Day, I'm speaking to those of you that suffer every time you walk past a picture or past the room or a monument that you set up for yourself as a reminder of your family member, uh, whether it be an apron or an old pot that mom used to cook with or a toy or a gown or a scarf that belonged to your child. I want you to know that we understand what it means to be brokenhearted. And we know the Father who will bind up your wounds. And to bind up is more than just to wrap away, but he's using the healing balm of Gilead to cover every point of your heart, every entrail of your heart and heal you. So I want you to know that you are not alone today. That God hears you and he sees you and he loves you. I also want to encourage the mother today that may have or may be experiencing abuse, uh, whether that come from a spouse or from your own child. I want to give you some encouragement from the 72nd Psalm, starting with the 12th verse. It's specific to those who are suffering, whether it be mental, emotional, or physical abuse. The word of God says, for he delivers the needy when they call out, the poor also, and him who has no helper. He will have pity on the poor and weak and needy and will save the lives of the needy. 
He will redeem their lives from oppression and fraud and violence. And precious and costly shall their blood be in his sight. The only other time that the Lord refers to blood is the blood of our Savior that he shed on the cross. There was the blood sacrifices of the animals, but that was in repentance. This is about his children that are suffering. And so I want you to be encouraged in that your blood matters to God. It is pricely to him. It is costly to him. And he shall redeem your life from your oppression and from the liars and the fraud and from the violence. And I want you to understand that God knows that we are human beings, that he knows that we get upset with him in our natural and in our spiritual states. There are moments where we have said to him, God, why did you take my mom? How could you take my child? What did I do to deserve this? Why am I here? Why am I the person who has this story? Where is all of this prosperity and this healing and this restoration? And there are those that'll tell you, don't say that to God. Don't speak that out loud. Watch your mouth when you talk to the Savior. Guess what? One of David's priest musicians wrote in the 73rd Psalm, his name was Asaph, and he spoke to us the 21st through the 26th verses about how near God is, even when we are foolish in our words, when we are angry, he's still there. So it says, for my heart was green, embittered, and in a state of ferment, and I was pricked in my heart. So foolish, stupid, and brutish was I, and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Here comes the reminder. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You do hold my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel, and afterward, receive me to honor and glory. There is honor and glory in being real with God today, moms. So whatever feelings that you have, express them to him. Cry out to him. Let him bind up your wounds and let him restore honor to your life. You are not alone. He will rescue you. God bless you. Good morning, Ecos. It's Shermel. I bid you greetings this morning. Happy Sunday to you. I hope that you have been enjoying the worship experience thus far. It has been phenomenal and amazing as always. I find it an honor and an honor to be before you today. Um, in honor of Mother's Day, I want to take a moment just to wish all of the mothers out there across the land, whether you're watching us live or on the replay, I want to take a moment just to say happy Mother's Day. Day. Happy Mother's Day to all you amazing moms out there. You know, today is a day, a national holiday where we are honored and celebrated and recognized. Um, it's, it's a big deal. I think it is one of the largest celebrated uh, holidays. And why? Because you moms are amazing. You're amazing. We're amazing. We're amazing. We're amazing. We're amazing. You know, and so today you're going to be showered with love. You're going to be recognized. You're going to be honored by family, friends, loved ones, strangers. You know, today is a day that I encourage you uh, to really posture yourself to be in full recipient mode, right? So if you have an S on your chest, I want you to lay that down. Hopefully you don't have it on your chest. I know I've retired my S some years ago. I realized that it was uh, more than I could bear. Uh, and hopefully you don't have one on your chest. But if you do, I want you to lay it down today. And I want you to be in full recipient mode and receive all that is offered and available to you. Sit back, kick your feet up, and really take in all the love, all the blessings that is available to you today. You know, um, as moms, you know, we typically are givers, and I know that sometimes it's difficult for us to be on the receiving end. Um, but today, I want to encourage you 
to do just that, to receive without giving, you know. Um, But I also want to encourage you after today, you know, tomorrow we return back to our normal routine in the days to come. I want to leave you with a word of encouragement, you know, to carry you in the days to come. After, um, After this day is over, you know, we return back to our normal duties and we return back to business as usual. But I want to encourage you just as you receive today, I also want to encourage you to continue to be a giver, but not just a giver to others, but I want to encourage you to be a giver to self. You know, the Bible tells us in Matthew, tells us to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Love your neighbors as you love yourselves. And so what that scripture literally is telling us is that as we love ourselves, we're to love our neighbors. What I find interesting is that we tend to love our neighbors unlike we love ourselves. We tend to be more compassionate and more selfless to our neighbors than we are to ourselves. And But I want to encourage you to really take that scripture to heart. And I want you to take that same selflessness and that same compassion that you extend to your neighbor. And I want you to begin to extend it to yourself. I want you to begin to be self, a little selfless with self, which could equate to being selfish. And I also want you to be compassionate towards yourself as you are compassionate towards others. You know, um, Uh, One of the things that I like to do um, is in the mornings before my eyes open up and greet the day, I like to visualize myself as a princess, the princess that I am, and the daughter of the king. I like to visualize myself sitting at the feet of my father in clothed in royalty. You know, I've got jewels on. I've got the, the best of the best. I, I'm in clothed in royalty and wealth, wealth of knowledge, wealth of love, wealth of resources, wealth of knowledge, wealth of understanding. I visualize myself sitting at the feet of my father um, the, as a daughter of the king. I also visualize myself uh, being seated at the right hand of my father. And so that's something, if you like, that's something that you can do also to help posture yourself in a position of giving of self, to posture yourself, to be able to be compassionate towards yourself, to be able to be selfless towards yourself without guilt, without shame, without condemnation. Why? Because the Bible tells us that we are daughters of the King. We are a part of the royal priesthood and we deserve to love ourselves. We're commissioned to love ourselves as we love our neighbors right? So let that, I hope that is an encouragement to you. Let that be something that you practice and you work on so that you're not burnt out, so that you don't reach a place of burnout, so that you don't reach a place of feeling unworthy, but you know that you know that you know that you're worthy. Why? Because the Father says you are. The Father says that you are royalty, that you are a royal priesthood. The Father tells you to love your your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you're compassionate and selfless towards your neighbor, you also have to be compassionate and selfless towards yourself, right? So I hope this really encouraged you today, moms, um, in your days to come, begin to practice that. And so I just want to say a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we honor you, God. We thank you, God, for just your goodness and your kindness, God. We ask, oh God, that you help us, God, to give ourselves permission to posture ourselves, oh God, to be givers to ourselves, God, to be able to be compassionate, to be able to be selfless towards ourselves, Father, without guilt, without shame, without condemnation, Father. Help us, Father, to see us as you see us, as that we are fearfully and wonderfully made made by you, that we are the apple of your eye, oh God. And God, we just thank you for your faithfulness, for your goodness, for your kindness, for your love, for your peace, for your joy. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Ecos, it has been a pleasure. I hope that this has blessed you, and I hope you have an amazing day. 
Hey guys, well, I hope you enjoyed today's service, all of the tributes, all of the words. I pray that it blessed you. And listen, we know that sometimes it's not easy being a mom. So we really hope that this was a great encouragement for you today. And we also know that not everybody who wants to be a mom is a mom yet. So I want you guys to know that we are standing with you, we are praying for you, and that we are here for you, and that the Lord will give you the greatest desire of your heart. Now, I pray that you have the best Mother's Day ever. Go eat some good food, go have some good laughs, listen to some good music, and tag us in your post. We wanna see how you do Mother's Day. Alrighty, have a great week.